You have been a big bull on Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, we had some folks that some people know on our show earlier this week. Becky was out in Omaha. I want to show you what they had to say if we yeah. could uh, roll the tape on Bitcoin from Mr. Munger and Mr. Buffett. The asset itself is creating nothing. I think it's a scumball activity. I would short it if there was an easy way to do it. So there you have it. You have Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, one of whom was calling it a scumball activity, the other saying, Bill Gates saying he would short this thing if he could. And you're saying they're all wrong. Yeah. Explain. Um, well, look, not everybody is right all the time. And I think we have to acknowledge that we all have biases. And look, I'm a disciple of Buffett and Munger. And one of the things that um, they have said for years, which I believe, is you define a circle of competence and you stay within it. And I think it's been clear in his entire investing career that technology is not in his circle of competence. And so the only technology name that he's owned is Apple. I mean, he, you could claim that IBM was a technology company. That's borderline. It's out of uh, that. <laughs> that. That didn't work anyway. And, right. And, and Apple, I was thinking that. If he got in Bitcoin, if he eventually got in Bitcoin, when he got in, eventually got into Apple, it would already be at a million dollars probably. Probably. But Shamath, uh, just going back to this, this, I don't think he looks at it as a technology. I think he looks at it as an asset class that he would put in the same, a similar class with gold. Just it's a non-productive asset. It's an asset that is only worth more if other people agree to pay more for it. That, that's the type of issue that Which he's Which I also about. agree with. I think, I think it is exactly that. I think it is a replacement to gold. But again... But you like gold. You're saying you like non-productive assets. I like in a portfolio. Mm -hmm. for again, my portfolio is 99% risk on, 1% risk off. And in that 1% risk off bucket, I think that something like Bitcoin is really important. Why? Because it is not correlated to the rest of the market. And the biggest thing that's changed... You don't, you don't believe that the success of Bitcoin over the past several years has been correlated to the market? I would say not directly correlated, but clearly so, the, the idea that there's as much liquidity and cash slosh, sloshing around in the world has allowed people to buy into Bitcoin in a way that they wouldn't have, frankly, if the that's market... That's different than being correlated to a strong no, economy I know, but or, or so, earnings. So, but there so, is look, a, that's just, that's a liquidity Bitcoin. argument. That's not yeah, a correlation. I've been, in the I've been in the Bitcoin market since 2012. And I feel like I'm in two different universes. I need a passport to go between the Bitcoin world and my regular world. These are not the same people. Um, and what I would tell you is the people that own Bitcoin in 2012, all the way up to now, the majority of those people view it as a hedge to the traditional financial infrastructure. Um, whether that's true or not is unclear, but that's how we've all viewed it. Separately, what Joe says is absolutely right. There's a big difference between correlation and liquidity. And the reality is all of these financial assets in the traditional markets are fundamentally correlated. We saw that in 2007. Everything broke down. Things that we thought were hedges went away. And so I think it's really important to not forget what happened there. So in 2018 or 19, heaven forbid we go through another cataclysmic financial event, we are going to see the same fundamental correlation. And so again, I ask, why would it not make sense to have a non-correlated hedge? for a small amount of your, this is about buying insurance. It was the same reason why in 2007 and eight, the folks that bought simple, simple insurance bought some CDS, yeah, like well heroes. Buy gold. I mean, at least gold's got a 3,000 year, 10,000 year record of, of being a store of value. I mean, I think that's the other thing Buffett's saying. There's no reason to think this is a store but of I, value. I think that's a fair point, but I think these are not exclusive decisions. And, yeah. um, you know, for, for this younger class of entrant into the market, they probably don't want to buy gold. In fact, they don't want to buy gold, and they want to buy something that's much more digital and reflective of their values. How do you feel, though, about the idea that, that, that Charlie sort of suggested, that there's something sort of scummy about that, or that there's a lot of scum in the crypto world right now, and, and that there's a lot of people who have been sort of sucked into this world that have bought into this world by, by, by some folks who, who may not be as... Um, um, Look, I think it's really unfair to not understand something and then to disparage it. Um, again, I think he's exceptional. I think Warren Buffett is exceptional. I think Bill Gates is exceptional at what they do. And I think it's fair to say that in 30 or 40 years, if I'm you know, a vibrant, successful investor, and right. if I'm back on this show, the idea that I know what's happening 30 or 40 years from now, as well as some other new 40-year-old or 30-year-old entrant into the market, is just not true. The reality is things change. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.